Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiterter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. I have here a couple of patients for you who both attended for earwax removal or dead skin removal, but uh, presented with incidental findings after removal of their wax or dead skin. So this is patient one and this is their right ear. This right ear was fine after the removal of the wax. There was no underlying pathology but in their left ear, uh, unbeknown to them, they had a posterior perforation. And I really want you to kind of stay tuned just to see um, this perforation because we can actually uh, peer through the perforation into the middle ear and see their incus, uh, their stapes, which is the second and third of the middle ear bones, and also the, the stapedial tendon. So that tendon attaches to the stapes bone which is the smallest bone in the body and in response to loud sounds that tendon contracts and when it contracts it fixates it stiffens the ossicular chain so the ossicular chain is the three middle ear bones um, we just call it the ossicular chain and when the ossicular chain is fixated when it stiffens the eardrum becomes tense and that helps to repel and reflect and attenuate loud sounds so it's a reflex action and it's designed to protect our ears from loud sounds. So it, it varies um, when it's stimulated from individual to individual. An average stupidal um, reflex, we call it, stupidal reflex, um, occurs around, I would say, 90 to 95 decibels. Again, there is a bit of range in that. Um, if you've got a conductive hearing loss, you may not have stupidal reflex if you've got uh, some sort of occlusion in the ear canal on the in the middle ear but um, we can actually see that and I've never seen it before myself I've seen it in textbooks I've seen it uh, in surg uh, surgical videos that I, I watch sometimes but I've not actually witnessed it myself and it's a great view we can see some, some blood vessels and capillaries as well we can see the incudo stupidal joint uh, that's where the incus bone attaches to the stapes bone. It's a ball and socket joint. We can actually see that. And I've annotated it. So um, stay tuned for that, uh, which is coming up now. And patient two, um, they have had previous surgery to their ears. They've had a mastoidectomy. It was a canal wall up mastoidectomy. So the mastoid bone is the bone behind the ear. And sometimes that can get infected and it needs to be drilled away. And... There's two types of mastoidectomies that are performed. Uh, a canal wall up, where, that's when the ear canal itself, uh, it retains its shape, it's not drilled away. Uh, but in some more severe cases, the canal wall down procedure is recommended. And that's when the ENT surgeon not only drills away the mastoid bone, but it, it drills away the back part of the ear canal wall as well. So the mastoid bone region and the ear canal become one, it enlarges the ear canal sometimes call that a radical mastoidectomy. So here is their perforation. It's a posterior perforation. Uh, they were completely unaware that they had this. And uh, whenever you do earwax removal, sometimes a patient, well, I've happened before where patients had a perforation and they kind of point the finger at, oh, you've done that. So I was a bit worried at first. Uh, but obviously the patient didn't experience any pain or discomfort so they're fully aware it wasn't caused by us we've got a video and this is why the eye clear scope is fantastic because we can record the procedure play it back and then they kind of remembered when it potentially may have occurred it was um, whilst they were swimming i think and they were diving so we call that barrow trauma when the water enters the ear at high pressure and it can perforate the eardrum now again i'm just going to mop up some dead skin around the edge you may notice on the right-hand side where the perforation is, on the canal wall, you can see some dead skin lining the canal, and it's like in a strip. We call that a keratin trail. So that dead skin is dying and shedding near the eardrum, and it's on its way out, it's migrating. But that keratin trail is probably a bit slower because of the perforation, maybe it's holding it up. Um, so it's become visible, that skin. It's not migrating as quick as the other skin in the ear. And that skin then becomes oxidized and you can see it. And we call that a keratin trail. So I'm now going to, you can see that dead skin there, uh, just at 12 o'clock there. And you'll see it again. We're going to go in and out a couple of times. I'm going to annotate this in a moment. So 
ISJ means it in kudos to pedal joint. That's where the incus joins to the stay piece. And you saw another label, ST, that's a stapedal tendon. So that uh, is posterior to the neck of the stay piece. Yeah, so I've, I've never witnessed it myself. You can see the annulus as well of the eardrum, that white rim, the perimeter, which is made up of fibro cartilage. So that was really, really interesting. So that patient's been referred to ENT. It's unlikely that that's going to spontaneously heal because it's been a long-standing perforation given when the patient believes it may have occurred. So this is patient two. Now, in the centre, I should have probably annotated it, but you can see a white protruding um, uh, landmark. That Now, we've got to be... Because I, I know this patient, I've treated them before. That is actually the hammer bone that's protruding out. And you're going to see it a lot in a lot more detail in a moment. And what I'm doing here is just peeling away the skin. Now, if I wasn't aware of that, potentially you may, um, it's plausible that for someone to just to, with the suction probe, go for that first, because it just looks as part of the skin. And that would have been incredibly painful for the patient. So the top part of the hammer bone, we call that the short process of the malleus, is protruding outwards. And that's because the eardrum severely retracted. The eardrum's retracted um, in the posterior superior region. I'm going to annotate that and also significantly anteriorly. So this patient does wear hearing aids and they've been reporting that the ear is a bit damp. And upon first inspection, th there was some dampness there on the dead skin that was lining the ear canal, but we weren't able to see underneath. And upon removal, we can see this patient has got a very deep posterior superior retraction pocket. There's some dead skin that's occupying that space and that's the, that's how a cholesterol can start you can see to the top where that hammer bone is protruding out there's a pocket there that's a retraction pocket so you may have heard me talking about a retraction pocket before and dead skin you can see it's collecting in that pocket and so we're going to remove the majority of that but if that skin collects in that pocket it can't migrate it's trapped that skin can then grow, it can form into a plug, and it can get infected, and we call that a cholesterol Cholesterol releases uh, quite to a uh, few toxins, enzymes. It's kind of highly acidic, and then it can start to disease and erode all the surrounding features. It can go into the middle ear space and uh, disease the middle ear bones. So PS, but retraction, that's the posterior superior retraction, anterior retraction. This patient's also got a significant perforation at the front part of the ear canal. You can see that region is damp. Now, we're not sure whether there's an underlying cholesterol there already occupying that part of the ear. Normally, a cholesterol occurs in the posterior superior quadrant. But because this eardrum is so severely retracted anteriorly, there could be some dead skin at the top there. So when, yeah, so cholesterol can go inwards, it can start to disease the middle ear bones, it can go upwards to the skull base, um, it can cause a brain abscess, lead to meningitis, so it could potentially be fatal. It can go posteriorly to the back part of the ear canal, into the mastoid region, hence why um, patients had a, a mastoidectomy before. Um, and it was a canal up, so it's, they've not have to drill into the mastoid region and the canal wall, they don't have to join it together, but it's possible that they may need revision surgery. Um, and it can go anteriorly towards the TMJ, to the jaw joint, uh, the facial nerve region. So I'm just trying to get some of this dead skin off. And you can see where the sucker is underneath that white bulbous object. That's, the, as I said, the short process of the malleus. And that was protruding out of that layer of dead skin. And it did look like the dead skin. So just pause that, um, just so you can have a good look at the deep retraction. There's a little bit of skin left in there, but that's fine. I've got the majority of out. It was a bit uncomfortable, that region, but it's not ingressed. Um, it's just on the surface. And this patient is going to have to use some antibiotic ear spray. And I've arranged for them to see uh, uh, the, the uh, ENT specialist that they see regularly. So this retraction, it's so deep. Now, the middle ear space, it varies from individual to individual. From the underside of the eardrum to the organ of hearing, the inner ear, it can be between 0.7 mil and 1 millimetres. Um, again, there's a lot of variance there. 
this this retraction is so deep. I, I've just gone inside, I'm, and I'm actually technically occupying the middle ear space. So this is not a hole. This is not a perforation. This eardrum is sucked in, and where I am now, it's a bit damp. Um, so that's some dead skin. So is that because of a cholesteratoma, or is it granular myringitis? And I sent this video to my ENT colleague, and he said it's one or the other, and they do need to be seen. Um, granular myringitis. Myringitis is an inflammation of the ear, uh, the eardrum, the outer layer. Yes, it's an infection inflammation and granulation is um, new connective tissue that forms as part of the healing process and it can have its own blood supply and blood vessels it has a bumpy uh, moist pink uh, uh, texture to it well i hope you enjoyed those interesting cases uh, i wish i could talk more about them in detail but um, hopefully that all makes sense take care speak soon